Canvassing, I love to, does anyone know that I love to canvas? Yeah. So there's two ways to canvas. One is market canvassing. Going into Buffalo, New York and going center by center by center by center. Market canvassing. Target canvassing is I want a bike store and listing the 23 bike stores in a, a two hour drive and going to visit each and every one of those bike stores. And of course, if I go visit a bike store and it's in a shopping center, I'm going to canvas it, but I'm not going to distract myself and go to the center next door, because then, then, then I'm off the mark. So those are the two ways that I like to canvas. So, that, so, so when you go canvassing, I, say, I always say to people, what do you take when you canvas? So people go, oh, I take my business card. And then if I'm if in a physical location, and if you could visualize this, pretend you're, you know, you've got, it's the clerk in the store and they have a desk in the back room. And you've given your business card to the gatekeeper. And the, the owner of the business comes in that night, right, to come to check on the business. And on his desk, with multiple other things, there is your business card, or there is my flyer. Your business card that has, you know, prime, prime, premier, 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 Tipton Wright premier. What does the bike store owner know what premier does on a business card? Where does that business card go, Tipton? In the business card file. In the business card circular file, right? But if you have a flyer that has your property, the location, the traffic counts, the other tenants in the flyer, your contact information, like any of these, they're gonna look at that, right? Because what do we know about most mom and pop entrepreneurs when they opened their first location? What was their, what did they wanna do next, William, when they opened one? Because it was their American, so, they like talking about real estate and they like asking about real estate. So having a flyer with real estate versus a business card is super, super, super important. Additionally, if you have a space that has a valuable infrastructure, former restaurant space, former medical, former hair salon, I had a client call me and said, can you come up and do some canvassing with my leasing agent, we've had an empty hair salon available for a year and we don't understand why we can't lease it. And I said, okay, well, great, I'll come up on Tuesday, let's go canvassing. I have the flyer ready. Cause yeah, I have a flyer on the shopping center. And I go, okay, well, does the hair salon have any infrastructure in there that's valuable? Oh yeah, it has 15 chairs, and 15 chairs eight sinks, a bunch of mirrors, you know, yada, I'm like, uh, we, need, we need a flyer with the picture of all of that. He goes, okay, can you have that ready? So he gets it ready. We go and hand the flyer out to 30 hair salons within half a mile of the center. And we had an LOI and a lease signed within 30 days. I said to him, do you think that hair salon operators on their days off travel around to the neighborhood shopping centers and go vacancy by vacancy and look in the window and go, is there 15 chairs and sink? There's no way. They're busy in their store. We have to make it easy for them. So if you have a space that has a valuable infrastructure, like a restaurant, and I know you guys have a hard time seeing these. I say I have, um, oh, here's the flyer. 1967 turnkey upscale hair salon, 18 chairs, four sinks. We leased it in three weeks. Restaurant space, put the size of the hood, put the ADA bathrooms or not, put the ampage, put the size of the grease trap, make it easy for the prospect. They don't have time. They would be interested if you make it easy for them. 